Thank you, but do you need microphone or yeah, it's ah for the recording? Okay, so let me uh, repeat myself. So my name. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Yuri. I work at Red Hat. Yeah, I'm handling yeah Kubernetes operating on a daily basis. And uh, my friend here, and I'm Jurassi. I'm a software engineer at Grafana Labs, and I work with the OpenTelemetry collector. Thank you. And today, uh, I'd like to invite you all to embark on a journey uh, to understand how can we build a uh, observability, a resilient observability pipeline, uh, and uh, using the Open Telemetry Collector. Uh, we're going to cover in that journey, uh, yeah, some concepts like data persistence, uh, scalability, instrumentation, high availability, and all of that it's important in the end to detect our failures. To start uh, that talk properly, uh, let's understand what is exactly resilience in observability. I'd like to paraphrase uh, a colleague uh, in that sense that wrote, is the ability of an application to resist or recover from certain types of faults or load spikes and remain functional from uh, the customer perspective. And now let's understand how the Open Telemetry Collector can help us, or not us, but our applications to recover from certain types of faults. Yeah, so what exactly is then a resiliency in the context of Open Telemetry Collector? And what is a pipeline? when it comes to Open Telemetry Collector. So a, pi a pipeline can be either uh, a configuration of a collector itself or a composition of Open Telemetry Collectors. So we can chain collectors together and get a, a, a deployment. And we can call that, uh, that chain of collectors as a, an observability pipeline. Now, uh, an Open Telemetry Collector pipeline, the simplest way is just a configuration file like the ones that we that that we are seeing here. So it's just a collection of uh, receivers, processors, and exporters tied all together into what we call a pipeline in the configuration file. Now, uh, what it means in practice is we have an application that is generating telemetry data, and that uh, application sends data to a collector somewhere. That collector uh, um, do some processing of, on that data and send data out to a backend. It can be a, a logs backend, it can be a metrics backend, or perhaps a tracing backend. Now, what happens when the collector um, is, de is dead, when, when it dies, or when the connection between collectors and backends, they are not there anymore? So what happens when there is no telemetry data being sent to the backends? Now, um, in some situations, it might be fine to not have resiliency, to have data to not be sent. And tomorrow at the observability day, we're going to cover one of those topics. So what, for one company, uh, it's fine for them not to have a, a resiliency or a, a HA or highly available collector deployment. Um, because a collector can restart very quickly, so they can afford to lose some data for some time. But for most, most people, um, it's not actually fine. And if it's not fine for you as well, then, um, then that's what we are going to cover in the next few slides as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Azure C, for mentioning that, because for some people in some environments, it's not fine uh, to yeah, lose an open telemetry collector in, yeah, in the middle of an outage. And uh, let's understand uh, what is the path, right? Uh, most of you, uh, you yeah, may know uh, the configuration or how an a open telemetry collector configuration looks like. Uh, yeah, with the receivers, processors, exporters, and scaling. And uh, if we cover all the topic and we are going to dig into that configuration in order to achieve uh, the resilience, because uh, most of you uh, already configured it uh, like receivers, yeah, to receive the telemetry data, like logs, metrics, and traces, and processing that, and uh, yeah, transmit it to the backend. But how can we turn it out uh, resilient? Now, um, when we start to think about resiliency in terms of receivers, um, the Big Bang was not the beginning, right? So uh, the receivers are the beginning of the, the, the journey of the telemetry data. So we start getting data uh, within our pipeline as part of receivers. Now, 
Um, there are so many things that you can do with receivers to ensure that you have a resilient receiving side of your pipeline. Um, and most of them are related to the resiliency of the connection itself. Right, so you can you can make you should make <laughs> you should ensure that you can still receive data, uh, even if the remaining of your pipeline might be problematic. Now, um, when it comes to the networking between your receiver and your client, what you can do is um, you can do things like uh, setting a maximum connection idle time for the connection, so that the connections are broken after some time, forcing the clients to uh, build a new a new connection to the to the server to the receivers. Now, when we are talking about gRPC, what it means is um, the client-side load balancing for, for the client-side of those receivers, they would be forced to uh, be refreshed. So they would get new uh, connections to new collectors. So perhaps you have a, an elastic deployment of your collectors. So you have new instances of the collector. Uh, and those instances, if we're using gRPC, they are going to be idle for some time. So they're not going to get new connections until clients break their current connections and try to make new connections. Right, so we get better client-side load balancing when we force connections to be renewed, when we, close the, when we force closed connections. Now, this is just one example of the type of resiliency uh, configuration that we can apply to receivers. And in, within the open telemetry collector, most of the receivers that are uh, passive or receiving data, they, they follow some common patterns, like the config gRPC and config HTTP. So I guess the point here is take a look at the configuration options that you have uh, to tweak your receiver's uh, configurations um, when it comes to networking. At that point, uh, we understood how uh, the receivers uh, work and yeah, some strategy that we can use in our observability pipeline. Once the telemetry data uh, reached uh, the open telemetry collector, the data uh, should be started uh, processed. And at that point, we have to configure uh, the processors. We brought here uh, two examples of processors, like the memory limiter and uh, the batch processor. The names are yeah, really clear. The memory limiter will limit uh, the memory amount that uh, open telemetry collector is using to ingest uh, the data, and we could yeah to turn it out on uh, uh, observability pipeline more resilient. We have to limit this amount of memory and also the batch processor, which we will split uh, the, yeah, the, the telemetry data in batches, not in smaller batches, but in a batch uh, with the proper size that your infrastructure is expecting. And it's important also yeah, to talk a little bit about the future of uh, those memory limiters and the batch processor. In, yeah, there is a perspective that memory limiter uh, will uh, be replaced from a processor to an extension. That is another concept of the open telemetry collector. And the batch processors, instead of uh, being used as a processor, uh, will be a parameter of uh, an exporter okay, in the open telemetry collector. I believe it's worth uh, to mention that a little bit about the future perspective in, in those processors. Yeah, um, but then we have also resiliency at the exporter side. And I think, to me, that's the most interesting part uh, because that allows us to create mechanisms that allow our, our collector to be resilient to failures on the next hop, right? So if the, the, the server we are or the backend that we're send sending data to is offline or not reachable by our collectors, we can still keep data in memory and keep retrying to send that data periodically to the backend. So whenever the backend comes back online, we can send all of the data that we have in our queue. So we can, there are two things that we can, we can configure here. One is uh, the queue size, so the bigger uh, the, the queue size that we have, uh, the more data that we are going to buffer in case of failures. And the other relevant option here for us is, is um, the type of the queue. So we can have, by default, we have a in-memory queue. So we store a queue of a certain size in memory. Uh, but then we can also make use of persistent queues. 
So using persistent queues, whenever data is not flowing to our backends, data is going to be persistent on disk. So um, if our collector crashes, then we can replay from disk. Or uh, if we, we have a backend that is off for, for longer than uh, just a few seconds, we can um, reduce our memory consumption by flushing that data onto disk. So we have a possibility of having bigger queue sizes there. Now, similarly to receivers, uh, we can also have a, uh, we have the possibility of making connection tweaks. Um, so we, we have also config gRPC and config HTTP. While on the receiver side, we talk about server side. In here, they are the same constructs, but, but on the client side, right? So we, here we can force also um, some connection, some some changes for the config gRPC so that the connections are refreshed and renewed. So our um, um, our exporters have better client side load balancing. But we can also work on uh, some tweaks for better batching at the config HTTP. So. Um Receivers, processors, exporters, uh, configuration. But, okay, uh, you can approach me. We learned yeah, some uh, parameters example, but, okay, Yuri, how can I detect failures uh, of my open telemetry collector? Because uh, I can configure, I can yeah, uh, tell to the open telemetry how the data, uh, the telemetry data will uh, flow in and flowing out, but how can I detect exactly the failures? We brought here some, yeah, four, four examples uh, that you can use your in your daily basis. Most of you, I don't know, you are SREs or DevOps engineers, uh, you can use in your, uh, uh, dashboards to check. Okay, we have this hotel co exporter sent log records. Yeah, to check if uh, the logs, for example, in the case of logs, okay, if the logs are being exported to your uh, backend, like a Grafana Locky or I don't know, another uh, APM or backend system that you have in your infrastructure. And also, like the refused uh, log records, if you have yeah, any uh, outage in your open telemetry collector, this metric uh, will be populated with the amount of refused logs. The queue size that uh, Juracy just explained to us, uh, yeah, how the queue uh, will be configured in our structure. So if we have any outage or any problem in our open telemetry collector, uh, the queue size will get increased. And also the queue capacity uh, should be related to uh, the expected queue size in a case of uh, outage. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there is uh, much of theory uh, related to this open telemetry collector. And for that reason, uh, we brought here an outage simulation that uh, will consist of uh, telemetry gen, uh, if, uh, I don't know if anybody is familiar with this tool, telemetry gen is a tool test that you can use to produce telemetry data uh, for your open telemetry collector. And we are going uh, to trigger uh, 1 million logs uh, for the first local collector, uh, which will do the first operations, uh, the first validations of the logs. If uh, the logs, uh, yeah, got you refined, I would say that, then the logs will get exported to a second open telemetry collector instance, which will exactly uh, split the batches and do all the hard work before uh, sending to our graph on the log. And to demonstrate that the metrics uh, work, and then we're gonna simulate a crash uh, that consists of removing completely uh, the collector number two, the collector backend, and we are going to see if we have a failure detected or not, and putting back in the end, putting back uh, the open telemetry collector backend in operation. So, demo time, because it's too good to be true. Yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> Just a second. Who knows? Oh no, yeah, no data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, the outage. Yeah, no data. 
take a look. Yeah, there is a really outage, right? <laughs> yeah, but you yeah, explain uh, a bit uh, regarding this uh, dashboard. Uh, on the left side, we have uh, the queue size. And we have any, yeah, if we have any logs received. And yeah, in, a, in the bottom of this dashboard, uh, the queue capacity and how much logs we got exported and uh, also the lucky perspective if uh, we have received any yeah, logs from uh, the open telemetry collector backend. Okay, and also uh, during uh, the outage simulate, uh, simulation, uh, we're going uh, to see the same failed logs uh, get increasing. Let me uh, just create uh, the first two uh, open telemetry collector instance. Oh, so anyway, uh, we prepared uh, this uh, GitHub repo with all uh, the description of this demo. We're gonna share in our social networks after this presentation with also the slide decks, okay? Uh, let me just create uh, the first one here. Just, just one second. So the hotel, uh, the hotel backend, and uh, oh, uh, I just create the hotel backend, and uh, let me create uh, this not delete uh, apply, and we have create. Let me check if I get any pods on yeah on the default uh, namespace. Yeah, thanks God, uh, the pods are running. Uh, I yeah on the. Uh, right side, I have opened, yeah, thank you, Jurassic, for that. Uh, I have opened uh, a port forward uh, in our, in, in, in for, for our Grafana instance. And on the left side, I will open uh, also uh, a port for our local collector uh, in order to uh, enable the telemetry gen uh, to read out the first uh, collector instance, okay? And uh, at the second tab, uh, I will, yeah, I start the telemetry gen. Is yeah, generating uh, one million logs. Let's uh, check our dashboard. Oh, we have some logs ingested. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you see that? I don't know why we are not getting uh, this uh, received. Let me check here if I. Okay, it's because of this rate. Yeah. Save. Save. Uh, let me go back. Okay, so then uh, the queue size uh, at that point is yeah nil because we have nothing uh, queued to be exported because we don't have any yeah outage. And the queue capacity uh, we configure it to uh, 600,000. And we are receiving yeah, logs uh, in the open telemetry uh, collector backend. And at the very right side, uh, Loki is yeah, getting uh, new logs uh, every second. Okay? And yeah, thanks God, again, we cannot see any failed logs. Uh, to be exported, okay? Now, I'll simulate uh, an outage on the open telemetry collector backend to see if we get any uh, telemetry data uh, queued in our uh, open telemetry collector queue, okay? Just a second. Let me uh, delete uh, the backend. Let's see if it works. That's the outage. So, so far has been only setting up the, yeah. scenari it's, uh, yeah. the scenario. Yeah, let me check if the part is gone. Let's see. Oh my God, it's not working. And I'm refreshing. Yeah, the queue is not getting increased. It is. Ah. <laughs> 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 yeah, it works. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, we have some yeah, data queued, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's getting increased, increased, increased. Uh, and uh, Can I make a comment here? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we can see that 
the exporter, uh, so the number 61,420 on the second row, second column, matches exactly the number that we have on the Loki side. So it proves that we exported uh, 61K logs and Loki received 61K logs, but we keep receiving data. So our received is uh, still increasing. So we are receiving data. We are just not, not able to export this data out. And the queue size is also increasing, showing that uh, data is being piled up in, in memory or in, on disk um, until either we get a full queue uh, our queue size here is 600,000, I think, um, and then eventually, uh, once, anyway, so what happens now? <laughs> yeah, what happens now is, yeah, uh, someone from uh, the infra or someone from the SR team act to put back uh, the open telemetry collector backend uh, yeah, to the normal operation, and let's simulate that. Let's recreate our open telemetry collector backend. Now uh, we got uh, the open telemetry collector backend uh, to you know, running uh, up and running, and let's see if uh, the queue uh, will get clear. It's still yeah get increasing because we have some yeah pending uh, pending data to be exported, and now yeah in yeah, in a couple of seconds we should see uh, this queue size uh, decreasing. Hopefully. <laughs> Don't freak out. Don't freak out. That's fine. Don't freak out. That's fine. Uh, it's back, but there are so many connections piled up that uh, we are just waiting for those connections to be retried. Right? So it's okay to have the queue increase. Oh, it's still increasing. <laughs> um, eventually, we're going to drain this queue because all of the connections are going to be retried. And because the backend, we, we see that the backend is working, right? So uh, we have more data on the Loki side as well. So now we have the empty queue again, right? So don't freak out. <laughs> it takes a while for things to settle back and to be uh, normal again. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, and uh, let me just stop uh, our telemetry gen uh, because our, yeah, oh, sorry? Yeah, because the yeah, demo actually worked as expected. Let me just... And uh, to yeah, tell you last but not least, uh, we have, uh, if you remember uh, correctly, we defined a path uh, to achieve uh, the resilience uh, in observability pipelines. And uh, the last path is scaling and balancing. At that demo, uh, we installed the open telemetry, uh, the Kubernetes open telemetry operator, which help us yeah, managing the open telemetry collector instances. And one recommendation from us today uh, would be using this open telemetry operator because it deploys a native HPA concept. So if you have to uh, uh, yeah, scaling uh, your open telemetry collectors so uh, you can uh, use uh, this configuration. Regarding uh, load balancing, you can use uh, off-the-shelf uh, solution in Kubernetes like yeah, installing uh, Nginx or Kong, I don't know what best fits in your infrastructure, and also using uh, this strategy sidecar uh, to deployment. In our case, in our demo, uh, we used a deployment to deployment. One yeah, deployment will refine the data and send to a main deployment that will uh, be uh, the last mile in our uh, telemetry uh, infrastructure. But at that case, you can install a sidecar along, alongside your pod and we will do uh, locally uh, the first uh, refinement, the first validation for your telemetry data, metrics, traces, and logs, and so sending to a bigger uh, deployment. Yeah, we we described here uh, the deployment, but uh, if you want to use, for example, uh, DemonSat is also capable in case of uh, the open telemetry operator. Now, talking about the deployment architecture, um, resiliency is not only about 
configuring the collector to be resilient. It is also how you architect your deployment pipeline or your observability pipeline. So um, when using the operator, we have those deployment module uh, modes uh, available. So we have a deployment where we can, um, they're just regular Kubernetes deployments, right? So they have random names or partly random and you can scale up and down quite easily. We have sidecars, uh, the sidecar pattern. So we, we deploy one collector per pod. So that's very good when you have a like gRPC connections between uh, those sidecars and another deployment internally because we have a high um, uh, frequency of changes of the sidecars. So we get very good client side load balancing. Uh, we can make use of stateful sets as well, especially for scraping their useful. Uh, so for scraping receivers. And we have uh, daemon sets, uh, which are mostly um, um, useful for, not mostly useful, but they're more useful for single tenant architectures. So if we have multi-tenant, it's harder to get it done right. But uh, I guess my point here is we have, a, um, we have to consider the deployment architecture as well when thinking about resiliency. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, as uh, I mentioned uh, in the previous slide when I recommended some strategies to use uh, the open telemetry operator, uh, it's just a yeah, quick demonstration how uh, the CRG defined uh, by that operator could help us. Yeah, it's pretty uh, usual. Yeah, you define uh, the, target, uh, the target CPU utilization. Yeah, it's the same in your deployment, uh, for example, then you will define how your open telemetry collector will behave in case that achieve the, uh, the CPU utilization uh, percentage. Uh, yeah, it just was uh, a quick demonstration of the uh, operator CRG. All right, so what's next when it comes to resiliency and the collector? Um, so the first one, I think uh, Yuri mentioned already, uh, we have a few things moving around. So we have right now the memory limiter acting as a processor and there are conversations at the collector uh, project um, in moving that to be an extension instead. So a processor um, has already, so by the time that data got into a processor, it is already part of the pipeline. And if we have it uh, as an extension before the receiver, we can block the pipeline without data getting in, 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 in uh, within the pipeline. So the second thing that we want to change is, or that we are discussing, is making batch a feature of the exporter so that we don't have a batching processor taking care of the whole pipeline. We now have batching on a per exporter basis. Uh, we know that we need better self-observability um, so we need better metrics and we have to test or think about other scenarios so that we can provide better self-observability of the collector. And we need component-specific resiliency as well. So we just got a, 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 a conversation uh, this week or last week on the collector or open telemetry channel on Slack where it was clear that we need better uh, resiliency for routing and load balancer exporters, for instance, or routing process connector and load balancer exporter. Now, um, a few key takeaways, and I have only one minute. <laughs> it's that, uh, so the f I guess the first point is um, not all of the pipelines have to be resilient. Uh, so perhaps it's fine not to be resilient in your case, and perhaps it's not fine. Resiliency is a concern for the whole pipeline and, not, and, and for the whole uh, deployment architecture as well. Now, Collector has quite a few internal mechanisms allowing to survive backend crashes or um, problems in the connection between the Collector and backends. We have metrics. Take a look at those metrics. Get familiar with those metrics. They tell you the story of your pipeline. And in-flight data can also be replayed under certain conditions, so if data is on disk. And um, different scaling and load balancing techniques are available to achieve HA. And the most important slide, thank you, if my French allows me, merci and obrigado. <laughs>
Uh, is it possible in open telemetry uh, collector? If uh, yes, how do you survive the outage of a single backend? What do you do for this? And if it's not possible, why so? And <laughs> how do I need to live with this? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you have one data coming into your receiver and that is splitting into two exporters and one of them is failing, what you can do is, right now, batching is batch processor, so it's bit before the exporters. So that's one use case that we want to fix for, uh, for the future. But what you can do right now is you can send data to another pipeline via connectors, for instance. So you can use the forward connector and uh, on one yeah, so that's one way of doing that today, right? So you have two pipelines, one for each pro uh, one for each exporter, and then you use forward connectors to send data. So uh, each pipeline can be resilient on its own. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. So if there are any more questions for those two guys, uh, you feel free to reach out to them either here, but I think we are not like going home right now, so you can just like <laughs> find those guys and uh, ask a few questions because now uh, we have to switch to the next topic. And thank you very much for your t presentation. <laughs>